This is for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Shorten. And this is for the players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast for the 40 years of playing PlayStation 8. Plus years in that games media combined. We'd like to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 9am Australia Standard Time on YouTube and 8am on iTunes, Spotify and other podcast services. If you'd like to be a part of future conversations, please join us on Facebook, Discord, comment below. If you're feeling generous, join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash popculture. Head over there. Check out the tears. There might be something there that interests you. If you are a Patreon supporter, you can watch us record this show live like a handful of people are over there and they're commenting about apples and bananas because I accidentally made the, the private link go public and it went for about 30 seconds and it was just me and my son singing apples and bananas by the Wiggles. So there's that too. You go, that's, that's some of the cool things it's you get It's kind of behind to, the scenes content that you won't yeah, find it's, it's that else. It's that cutting edge shit that is <laughs> worth your Patreon dollars. But yeah, if you do want to show the life pop culture on your body, head to popcultures.com slash shop. We can buy shirts like this, like this. Uh, we are also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash popcultures. And while you're there on your podcast services, make sure to give five stars, reviews, and likes, and all that sort of shit. And check out the brand new show, The Young and The Wrestlers. No, I agree with Jess, though. She just says, I want apples, but you can keep the bananas. Because bananas are fucking gross. The shirt's getting really tight. Oh, you're getting too buff? <laughs> Yeah, buff. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you need, do you need a, a, a chunky. bigger, a chunkier, a bigger, a thicker shirt? No, I can't. My pride just can't take that. You at can't the take that. Oh I no, I, 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 I gave up that. on that ages ago. I was I like, oh man, I'm a XL now. <laughs> I've already bought bigger size clothes to go back and do it again. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. I can't. But I won't change my ways either. Yeah, no, but no, I think you are getting a little bit tankier. You know, there's a lot more manual labour that you're doing now. <sighs> As an air conditioner repairman. I'll speak to this, though. So. Yeah, that comes with it. Oh, what, yeah, the beer belly? Yeah, it's abs We do have beers after work every day. So. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Why am I getting fat? Hmm. So, how you been, man? Swell. Yeah, it's well. Same as usual. Yeah. It's just that time of year where there's not much going on. Just ticking over the motions yeah, yeah. The school's fun I guess yeah kids t- has, the, has the kids yeah good yeah. doing kids. Holly's on crutches she hurt what her the ankle. fuck happened to she rolled her ankle at school oh, kids and got an x-ray you know yeah I had blood crutches yeah gotta get a follow up appointment next week yeah nice mm. does look a touch more built can agree <laughs> <laughs> Woo, it's getting, it's getting moist in here. I need to hear the opposite. No, you are getting fat. Okay, <laughs> now I'll do something about it. No, you're looking good, man. All right. Give All another, right, I will have two pies. Give me for another lunch. double whopper with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Yeah, not, not too bad. Um, James punched me in the dick last week. It hurt for four days. That was awesome. Trick is with kids is to do it back. And they go, oh. oh. Like with the biting, you know? Ah. You go, oh. And they go, oh, I'm not doing anything. Well, the big difference, so Jake- Oh, you can't really say I punched my kid in the dick. Yeah. He's, he's two. He's two. <laughs> so he was just, like, I was cooking him a toasted cheese sandwich. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, it's taking too long. I'm hungry. And then his words, you know, I'm like, it's it's cooking, bud. Oh, do- oh, good. <laughs> yeah. And then I was out for about four days. I think this happened like two weeks ago now, but I've got to talk about it. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was a whole bunch of fun. Mm. And then to get super personal, because that's what we do here. It's personality based. Uh, I then had to go to the doctor and he's like, hey, what can I do for him? I'm like, my balls hurt <laughs> for four days. He's like, what happened? And because he's my son's doctor as well. I was like, James punched me in the dick. He went, <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> All right, pants off on the <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm. Pants off. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, mm, I've been yeah, waiting yeah, for yeah. this day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I. And Ever then, since I met you and your wife, I knew I'd get your pants off. <laughs> so then, on top of that, I then had to <laughs> go and get an ultrasound on my, on my drunk. Really? Yeah, because like, look, is that why you were off? Yeah, towards yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the week. Okay. Yeah, so I had to. It, what the makes Did the I, story okay, even I just better? Need, I just need one point of clarification. <laughs> yeah, because I know when women get the ultrasound of their tummy, they have to rub some kind of lotion. Yep. No, yep. Yep. Lotion the lady had to lube up the balls. <laughs> 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 and to make things even better, like... Did you get a chub? No. <laughs> if anything went away, oh, it went on okay. inside. Scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Paris has blown out his knee. Mm. 
So he stumped something from his knee. So the other day, he was, I think it was Monday, he's like, oh, I've got to duck out tomorrow. I've got an ultrasound appointment on my, for my knee. I'm like, what time? It's like two o'clock. Where at? Uh, that place over there, the, the radius. I'm like, I have a one thirty appointment and they're going to have to look at my balls. <laughs> so he's like, how many machines do they have? Like, one? Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's just been rubbed yeah. on your balls and then on his knee. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh. <laughs> still like hairs poking off it. <laughs> so he he was pretty, it was fantastic. So as like the turns out there was more than one machine. So as I finished up whatever I need to do, I walk out and I see him literally walk past, go to his room, and he sees me and goes, "Yes!" <laughs> it's like, all right, let's do this because I think he was genuinely concerned. He may have had Paris my is there, like, really, so what's your sanitary practices yeah. in the, in this place? Yeah. So look, I'm sorry to start the show with talking about um, male genitalia, but um, that's what happened, and was, that was that was my oh, week. We're doing anything for more views at this point? Yeah, that's it. That's it. I'll, I'll do anything for the viewers if people want to hear about that stuff. Just wait, I gotta snort my nose crap. Ugh, I'm writing the talent. So, you know, last week I was nice and chic. Mm. I'm just going worse. Cool. Good stuff. Nothing better than being locked in a room with you when you're on mop. I'm going to crack window. Mm. Nah, it's all right. All right. Um, I'm going to let... Uh, it becomes a game and they keep... Oh, they keep going with the groin hitting. You know what I mean? Yeah, that. Yeah. I'm going to hock some shit out of my face because this is all good. Let me get some drink. You want to tell the lovely ladies and ladies what you've, been, what you've been playing? But what if I haven't been playing anything? I've been just make up some. <laughs> you calling me a liar? <laughs> I've been playing more... Apex Legends, of course. Uh, I can't stop playing. It makes me very, very mad. I scream. I scream at this game like I have no game before, but I can't turn it off. And I don't know if that speak how that speaks to me personally, but uh, it's it's just good. It's so good. I do, however, think that I probably wind down. I'm playing it until the battle pass comes out. I'm like level fifty. Uh, I enjoy the game a lot, but it's kind of like why am I continuing to play at the moment? Yeah. Talking Apex. Oh, cool. Like, I enjoy it. I'm nearly level 50, which is when you stop getting loot boxes from leveling up. And it's like, oh, there's no incentive to keep really playing. I'll wait yep. for the battle pass. And if it's good, I'll keep playing. If not, then all right. That's good, though. I'm better in the face now. I've just cleared out all the shit. I'm sure you've t heard me hawking up crap. It's just my sinuses were a hot mess. Uh, it's both types of screaming, Jesse. It's bad screaming, screaming or just screaming with joy. Frustration ah, and, and, and joy. Oh, at Apex. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So Jess has been diving into Anthem. I know. I've, I saw the the Discord. Yeah. Little she, chat. Mm, mm. She's been filling up my Twitter feed with, "Hi, I'm Jess, and I'm very happy with Anthem." Oh, well, that's fine, Jess. I'm nice. Very well, nice. I haven't. I'm, uh, I nearly bought it day one because mm. we were talking before the day one buzz. So yeah, like, the day know, one. Day one buzz is always kind of gets times. you. Uh, but no, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Maybe, maybe in six months. Yeah, I, I think in a bit, of, a bit of time. The reviews are uh, iffy. Yeah, no, I totally get where they're all coming from. I've watched probably three hours mm. of every like Skill Up and a few other guys talking about it, and so that's pretty much how I felt when I played the demo. Exactly, and that that was kind of nice watching those watching those reviews and then seeing them match my Valid, thoughts. I'm like, all right, cool. I was. <laughs> Oh, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, it's like, hey, I know even what I'm after doing. how many years talking about games, it's still like, ah, oh, like, shit. Yeah, is my opinions correct? <laughs> am I in the right ballpark? And they're like, yeah, no, I am right. I am good. This isn't my game. Sweet. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm playing Diablo 3 a little bit. Oh, nice. Just I find it's a good game to go back to when I've got like a lot of podcasts or YouTube mm -hmm. I want to catch up on because it's just kind of just mindlessly Grimes smashing out. stuff while listening to stuff. Um, catch it up on my SCP videos. What's SCP? You don't know SP SCP universe? No, no, SCP. It's a fictional universe where the SCP are a group of people, kind of like the FBI, okay. who capture, uh, diagnose, and contain. Um, they call them SCPs, like SCP-092 is like a being that does this Alien? and that. No, paranormal, ex not ex Ooh. extraterrestrial, and sometimes just like fucked up creatures. Like, oh, oh. Um, is it a video or a, like an audio? No, it's a, it's a wiki. That's been growing for many, many years, but now there's YouTube videos that like talk about you know, SCP, the story of oh. SCP-192. Hi, Paul. Thank you for dropping by. Um, and some of it is like really, really creepy and unsettling, like, mm. re and like really scary. Um, and yeah, it's just a cool universe to like listen to nice. and stuff. I'll link your video. Please do. I might p 
pique your interest. Mm. As long as it's not uh, that dark, the dark web video one you sent me or that. No, no, that's a different. That's that, sort that of scale. podcast. That, yeah, that no, was no, really confronting, actually. Great podcast, though. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, Diablo three is my game when it's like I just want to catch up on mind out zone, zone yeah out I, I want to yeah. catch up on my podcast and stuff so I'll just smash stuff what about you uh, so this week I have played a lot of Far Cry New Dawn which we'll get to in the main topic of the show because this is our review uh, well, my review mm. y- your involvement uh, I did pick up uh, that uh, Cook Serve Delicious 2 Oh, oh! Play number so, one. Uh, no, uh, so it was, it was an, an email. Did anybody that, else? No, <laughs> it was an email that caught my eye. It looked like a fun little like cooking mama sort of vague sort of you know restaurant r- simulator running game, right? Mm. I thought it was be nice and simple and fun. It's hardcore. It's hardcore, fuck. Mm. But it was fun. <laughs> like it has all the stress of working in a take in in hospitality from the comfort of your own home oh yeah that's yeah. just what I want yeah, on, my, on my days off that's just <laughs> I haven't I tried it's got multiplayer though and I would like to try a multiplayer thing that might make it a little bit easier it's sort of like you know spread the spread the load like overcooked like overcooked but it's not quite as frantic as overcooked so you, you're pr- it's a lot of menus and it's a lot of button combinations to make things happen ah. so it's like I want nachos and then on the side you've got your four different toppings or whatever and you hold uh, L1 and then you press triangle circle square X for whatever associated uh, topping so you go, and then you whip it out and then there's also like you know uh, like hot dogs but you gotta cook the hot dog first and then you gotta load it up and then put the hot dog in it and and then you gotta like while well, doing they also gotta like clean the toilets and stuff it's all but it's all very button menu prompty stuff yeah. but it's it's good like good micromanagement stuff mm-hmm. so I don't, although I don't, I don't think it's zen enough because I was hoping for a more like zen like experience um, I don't think it's going to be I don't think it's that because I can't I probably can't listen to a pod while doing seems it seems to be an opening in the market for a zen cooking game yeah because they all seem to be like hey fuck you yeah hey fuck you frantic <laughs> fuck you we and need, your heart we need, rate we need four soups now <laughs> um yeah so it was kind of fun I was playing on the stream it was very difficult to stream only because it, t- it took so much of my brain mm. but what was fun though I found it very easy to sort of push through by vocalising my steps as I go I'm like hey man what do you want you want nachos you want chilies, bean cream cheese alright get the fuck out of here thank you very much and I was like just kind of and that really helped the momentum which yep. I probably can't do if I'm not on stream I'm laughing I'm mental <laughs> But the game, the game's tight. Like it's very, it's it's very simple, but it's also very deep if you want to go that way as well. So I, I myself unlocked four different restaurants because so you're you're constantly building up your restaurant mm. while also doing freelancing at yeah. moonlighting at other at other restaurants. Right. There's like an ice cream one. There's like a burger joint. There's a Chinese joint. There's like fish and chips. You know, it's just all, all kind of like practicing the skills as you go and you get medals for however well you do um so that's cool. pretty i'm in, i'm enjoying that uh cool. we did find uh, i did receive a copy of uh metro exodus from mm. uh, the pr guys here in australia so thank you very much for that it did come a couple of days after um release date so i've not really dived into it a whole bunch mostly because i'm focusing on far cry yeah um but well, we'll come back to that and we'll probably hopefully have some more thoughts about that next week yeah um i just else? wasn't in the mood for it this yeah week. no understandably um, it's good like the three or four hours I've played it's good I know it's good I know mm. it's very good but it's not what I'm after it's just not at that the itch right yeah. now yeah um, but I think I need to sit down and maybe give it a three hour sesh yeah and then it's like okay now I can't stop yeah you I know think that kind that. of um, a thing and that's why I, for that reason is why I'm focusing on Far Cry right now or, you know, or, or sorry I spent this week focusing on Far Cry um, for that reason I think I'd mm. much rather I get this done mm. before I um jump into something else yeah and it, it metro seems like the kind of game like it was when i played uh 2033 is that i can't play anything else while i'm playing this game yeah so you know i'm letting the apex kind of die off um you know get the diablo itch done mm. and then i'll, I'll sink into it mm. and you play some tekken with dylan um that's about it but anyways cool. that was what we've been playing this week so that's looking to the news for this week in a section we call inform the players we tell you about all the playstation news that happened this week Number one, Sony has announced that Media Molecules Dreams will be released in early access form in spring 2019. That's American spring, I'd imagine. So that's out sure. fall, so that's probably, it's autumn. Autumn. So in the next couple months. Yeah. And um, will cost $30 
uh, US, no UK or Australian price available at the moment. So we'll say presumably... 50 bucks. 50, 60 it's bucks. It's always yeah. rounded up to about 50 bucks. Yeah. Uh, the, the clever game creation tool will arrive as a creator early access version containing the suite of creation tools and tutorials for using them. You'll be able to browse other people's creations and remix them, a series of pre-made customizable arcade games and an inspiration gallery of particularly impressive bits of work <laughs> curated by Media Molecule. The early access version is described as limited edition. It's not clear exactly what that means. It seems like will only be available for a limited time. Now, this is clever. You know, I think this is clever because when it does full release, mm-hmm. there'll be a whole bunch of content for people. Well, to my play. understanding that was the beta it was supposed to be. No, no. My understanding was the beta because it was the creation beta, so it was designer and people coming in, working, building shit, and then. Be- and but like, it was closed beta. Mm. Whereas this kind of opens it up for anyone that wants to spend thirty to fifty bucks. Well, ha- yeah, having it only be half price of a, of a big retail game is kind of cool, especially mm. in that early access. Yeah, and it, it makes it worthwhile to jump in early, and then you're not paying sixty bucks upon full release in mm. US prices. Even if you just buy it, yeah, and sit on it for six months, yeah, until it's actually out, and everyone else has done all the work John for you. I might do. Yeah, <sighs> assuming, so I don't assuming have... we get the option to do so. Dan. True. We don't know yet. So I don't have the creative prowess to really make some stuff. Um, no. I have the issue where I do have the creative prowess up here, but I can't, but I can't translate yeah, same. it to... Same with guitar. Like, I'll come up with a, what I think is a really good tune in my head. I'll even hum it into my phone so I don't forget it. Mm. And then I'll get home and go to play. It's like, oh, this shit. Like, I can't... It not How it sounds in my yeah. head is not how I can get it to sound here. Yeah, there is a very... There, I've been saying there's a very distinct difference between my hand and my brain. Mm. So I'm like, I have an idea for a drawing because I have zero artistic skills. I'm like, ah, ruins that. <laughs> it's just like a circle with two eyes. Yeah. I've there, drawn an emoji. The only thing I can kind of roughly do is paint minis right now. I can yeah, kind of well kind of get that to what I want. Um, but even then, I was like, I'm like, I, imagine, I imagined it. It's not quite it. But you'll get there. But I'll get there. Yeah. Uh, number two, Sony has filed another patent for backwards compatibility, in theory allowing the inevitable PS5 to play games from previous console generations. Beginning of the month, the patent registered under Mark Cerny's name was discovered, supposedly pointing to a method of backwards compatibility that would let the PS5 run PS1, 2, 3, and 4 titles. Just like the last patent, this one devises a system that essentially tricks old games into thinking that they're running on their original platforms. It certainly seems to fall in line with what's already been uncovered. This second patent was also registered by Mark Cerny as well, who is mm-hmm. like the system architect. Yeah, he's the, he's the man. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they, it seems like they're really doubling down on it. So they w- that it's <clears throat> a different pattern to the first one, running mm. s- the same kind of way. So I think they're gonna. By the looks of it, they've got a few different ways they want to try this, and they'll probably try to find the one that works best. Yeah, the difficulty of the pattern, though, it is all in Japanese, so it makes yeah. it tougher for us, uh, white There's people. pictures, yeah. and you're like, oh, like, you know, like, that goes to that, and that, and that. Oh, okay. I so I, what I'm wondering whether this is uh, hardware. So when, can I put in my old PS2 disc into this PS5 and it works? That would be amazing. Or it kind of like the Xbox One, how you put it in, and then it goes, oh, okay, cool, and then it pulls digitally. Having said that, could you imagine how small they'd be able to make consoles if they didn't need the disc drive mm. oh, that'd be pretty cool once at least or that much all that room used for more power mm. instead of a disc drive but I don't want the the whole we're all, not ready for, we're, Australia's not quite ready for well, a, not, not only a, a just from like the internet speeds and stuff but just from pricing our digital pricing is just fucked it is fucked mm-hmm. I can go I bought Metro Exodus from JB Hi-Fi for $69 on launch day to buy that from the PSN or the Xbox Live store $109.95 why? Why? It's so, and it's the same with all it's new releases. Flying here. And it obviously changes down the line as you know they have sales and all that on on digital stores. But, but it's, it's one just, of those things because one hundred nine ninety five is the RRP. It is yeah. the recommended retail price, and that's um, what EB Games will sell it for. <clears throat> yeah. Of course, they price match when you ask, but like Target have new releases for sixty nine bucks. So the big W. Yeah, so they are cutting into a lot of what the money that they could make on that in that because so Sony will still get the same cut. Mm. Um, the however, retailer gets less. Yeah, the retailer will get less. However, um, once I do, what's I'm looking for? <laughs> Optimistically is what I wanted. Optimistically. I do think that when when they eventually give away the the hard the physical stores, the drop price drops. But I also kind of doubt uh, doubt it. Uh, Paul James says in the chat, he says retail still rules for now until that begins to change. Digital stores can't undercut or retail plays hard. Yeah, and I totally get that relationship. But yeah, that's why like when 
other PlayStation podcast we listen to talks about the all digital future, I'm like, no, I don't want it. Mm. I don't want it. And especially when it comes to, of course, buying pre-owned games and stuff. Like, yeah. I bought Diablo for Xbox for $18. The Reaper of Souls edition. Yeah. Well. And on the Xbox store, $70. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, so. that's the only downside with digital. There's no possibility for a pre-owned market. Yeah, exactly. Unless they somehow... Sell you can sell your license like Steam trading or something. Yeah, like maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, number three, there's currently a mystery Bethesda title up for pre-order on Amazon US, as spotted by Eagle Eyed Wario sixty four. This guy spots a lot of stuff. He does. His name always seems to pop up. Uh, it's a full price pre-order at fifty nine dollars US, and it's listed for PS four as well as Xbox One and PC. It has a placeholder date of thirty first of December twenty nineteen. It's already a bit suspicious, but things get even more eyebrow raising when you watch the placeholder trailer attached to the product. It shows number cards counting down from ten to one. It's very falling out and the slight green tinge slight green tinge possibly hints at Fallout 3 so Fallout 3 Remaster has been in like the demand for a very long time mm -hmm. um, I think after the potential after the, uh, the PR damage that is Fallout 76 mm -hmm. I think this may be a good angle to go just to sort of recover some of that negative press someone pointed out that it could also be in a whole bait and switch uh, Elder Scrolls Blades Oh, yeah, oh, true. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the mobile one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If it was that, and they used the, the, the traditional fall Fallout countdown, yeah. it's like, and it's Elder Scrolls Blades. <laughs> and it's fucking Fallout Tactics. On I've, the still got, I've still got nothing against Bethesda. I still enjoy what they do. I yeah. still enjoyed my time with Fallout 76. But that would just be like, I, do you understand? <clears throat> yeah, that happening? would be a pretty big kick in the dick. Or what if it's like Elder Scrolls Legends, the card game now on consoles? Because mm. haven't they been working on that for a while? Yeah, as well? I think so. Fallout seventy six is actually finished now. Edition says mm. Paul. Well, maybe I haven't gone back to that. I kind of want to. I probably will with a bit of news we got about it. Oh, um, very nice. But yeah, obviously it could be anything. Yeah, look, especially Paul, being Bethesda, it could literally. See, be Fallout like three would anything. be nice. However, there are some things in Fallout three that would be really clunky if they just simply up res it. Mm. Um, if, whether they will put like the time to remaster it in, I, I think don't they know. might because. The Bethesda roadmap for the next six, seven years is Starbound and Elder Scrolls Six, mm. and there's no Fallout. Starbound? Is it Starbound? Yeah. Star Starlight. Star something. Star Citizen. Not no, Star, Star Citizen. Citizen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Starbound. Whatever their space one. Starfield. Be. Starfield. That's it. Uh, and there's no Fallout in there. Yep. So I think it would be wise well, to the idea was Fallout 76 would, would then help run that yeah Starfield thank you Paul uh, yeah so I'm sure I'm sure that was yeah the thing the, the plan idea. was Fallout to help run through that time so even yeah. though they're, while they're working on these other two things Fallout's still kicking along in some capacity and it still will be um, there's plenty of updates coming this year which I'll talk about in a sec uh, but yeah could be anything so don't get your or hopes nothing. up yeah could be anything or nothing uh, number four, Patrick Sodal, and former EA executive who left the publisher last year, has dropped some details on what he's doing now. They make for quite an interesting read. Upon leaving his position at EA, Sodal and created a new studio based in Stockholm, Sweden. The developer's name is Embark. Embark. It all depends where you put the emphasis on that word. Embark. Or embark. Mm. Uh, and Embarker. since its inception around three months ago it's already built up a workforce of over 50 people and is still growing Solon reveals that development of the studio's first title is underway it doesn't have a name yet and concepts still being finalised but the boss does give a general idea of what we can expect quote I can tell you that it's a cooperative free to play action game set in the distant future about overcoming seemingly impossible odds by working together Solon writes that's nice yeah it's you know he never has to work another day in his life no like he, literally like he worked actual millions of dollars yeah and you see how much well, who's EA's boss now um, uh, what's his name? I forget his name we were talking about like every week I forget his name anyway he's on like multi multi million dollars yeah. <laughs> so you know but it's good it shows that I think so Patrick does have a love for the industry in some he capacity, still wants to yeah. continue making games and what's basically an indie studio so yeah, yeah no it does it does say a lot which which is certainly nice 30 million payout um, which, certain, which yeah, it's, it's certainly a nice thing to see that he at least gives some shits mm. um, I don't know I don't know where to go I'm just sort of curious to see but on a good note you, you know that that studio has got a lot of financial backing yeah fucking oath maybe it'll be like uh, Ninja Theory the whole triple indie triple A Ooh, yeah, maybe. kind of thing uh, top selling games for weekending 17th of Feb 2019, number 10, GTA 5, number 9, Spider-Man, number 8, Call, 
know how you feel about those titles. Number eight, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Number seven, FIFA 19. Number six, Resident Evil 2 Remake. Number five, Red Dead Redemption 2. Number four, Kingdom Hearts 3. Number three, Jump Force. Number two, Metro Exodus. Number one, Far Cry New Dawn. Damn right, Far Cry New Dawn. Woo! Yay. And just some quick bits. Uh, Rocket League has added cross-platform parties via Rocket ID. Much the same way Fortnite has an yep. Epic ID and Epic Friends. You can now... Xbox to play with PS4 and create a party and all that kind of stuff. That's cool. Uh, Fallout 76 2019 content roadmap has been released. There's fucking heaps. What's, what are they planning? Well, it's pretty much every season has its own roadmap. Okay. So, like, um, in spring, you get all this stuff. In summer, you get all this stuff. So, the world, the actual Fallout world will alter accordingly. Yes. Appalachia. Uh, other vaults are going to open. The raids are coming. <sighs> All new events, uh, new main quests to go on, uh-huh. uh, and heaps and heaps of, like more than I could list. That's why I've just kind of put it as a. As well, a you, you literally wrote lots of cool shit. Yeah, and there is lots and lots of cool shit. There's lots of cool shit, so I think I'll prob- probably will end up jumping back into it uh, at some point when some of this stuff starts coming out. But it shows that they are they're not abandoning it. Yeah, at least for another year with what. Which is nice. Like. Which is good to know. Like I, it still doesn't add to any. Of the- the idea is whether this may, in fact, be free to play or whatever. Oh, they're also adding a proper PvP mode too, where you play in. I think you start your character as a survival, where it's just you're in, you live PvP. in the wild. You live in the wild, full damage all the time, stealing stuff. All right, cool. Like, that's a good. That idea. sounds cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. I personally want to play that until you're playing like, until you like level three and you see level eighty heading towards you on the map. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shovel Knight's final uh, DLC King of Cards has been delayed from April for a few months that's the uh, trading card game thing isn't it no King of Cards isn't it supposed to be a no, card King, King card Knight game? oh I uh, swear they did a, they were doing a card game of some sort maybe uh, but the uh, the Amiibo has been delayed too it's the last obligation they have from the Kickstarter yeah because they said they'll do Shovel Knight and then three expansions they did Plague Knight they did Spectre Knight King Knight's the last one they need to do, and I'm I'm 100 percent sure they can't wait to be fucking done with Shovel Knight at this point. Like it made a ton of money, but they're also super keen to get away from. I can imagine the majority of King of Cards is going to be free because if you backed it on Kickstarter, you get it for free as well. So they're mm. not. Re- I don't. I don't believe they're going to get any return from this, uh, but they're still. This is our obligation, and we're doing it. Yeah, the optics alone, like there's, they they there's the illu- or not the illusion there is the impression that these guys are rad mm. and they are willing to put all mm. the time and money we already in. saw in Blood, Sweat and Pixels yeah you know they had a very good chapter on, on the development of Shovel Knight but it also did seem like at that point they're like we're over it but they're still kicking so props to them well makes you wonder what the next thing they're going to be something awesome no doubt Sorry. that's it for the news Ryan as we have a chat to the players about Far Cry New Dawn that's right. So, thanks to Ubisoft Australia, I have been spending the last uh, two weeks, two weeks, week oh, and a bit, week, week and a half, week and a few days, week and a half, uh, with Far Cry a New Dawn. Um, now, there are some information here that I will give you all the slight repetition of what last week was with our, with our first impressions. Yep. We want to sort of nail that all down. Uh, so Far Cry New Dawn is set 17 years after the end of Far Cry 5. There are some spoilers here at the end of Far Cry 5 in order to bring on the New Dawn, the new, the new, the, you know, the, the new dawn, the cleansing. Uh, yeah, funny, like the new dawn, uh, the cleansing, uh, the Joseph Seed, the head of the Seed family, the main uh, antagonist in Far Cry 5 did unleash a ton of uh, uh, nuclear warheads. Playing, you know, pushing the area into uh, apocalypse, post-apocalyptic sort of real fucked up shit, right? So that's what that's the premise of the game. So uh, majority of the survivors have been in these bunkers for the better part of that seventeen years. Uh, you start the game on a train with a gentleman named Thomas Rush. Yes. Are you the same character? No, you are not the same character in Far Cry uh, 5. I said Fallout 5. Yeah, (laughs) that's right. So in that train, yes, you're with Thomas Rush, who is a man uh, who's known for going around helping uh, build up these sort of little outposts and things and sort of help people become new communities again. That's sort of his shtick. Um, during that kerfuffle, the train crashes, you spill out, and this is where you meet the twins, Mickey and Lou, uh, who are the female and the, t- the two female twin and anta- uh, main antagonists for the game. Yeah. Um, and so that they're the, sort of the big driving force behind all your actions. Uh, then as you come to, you uh, meet a woman named Carmina, who, for those of you that have played for, uh, for Far Cry 5, she's the daughter of uh, Nick and... 
Kim. So there's a guy that you find who's the, who's the pilot, right? So he has a partner in the game. She's pregnant. There's actually a mission where you have to run her to the hospital to have a child, and they have that child, and like you're the, so you, the character you play in Far Cry Five is the godfather of said child, right? Um, and then it was very interesting. So I didn't I didn't put two and two together straight away while I was playing. I'm like, come in, all right, cool. But like when you meet her mother, you're like, you look really familiar, and I can't quite pick why. And then later, when you go and find Nick and you liberate him from some captured place, you bring him back. And they have this moment of boo and they hug and I'm like oh my I literally had an out loud oh my god moment because it's although Far Cry New Dawn <laughs> is set in the same world map um, there are quite a number of changes to it it's it's not entirely a cut and paste job mm. so when there are moments of slight throwbacks uh, it's very nice because having just played Far Cry 5 again moving into New Dawn I'm like, I remember that. I remember that. And then so as you're going around, you're finding all locations, you're seeing characters you've met before, and it's, just, it's very, very cool. Mm, that's cool. Is at any point it explained why the pink? Uh, the pink, sorry. Or, or where it all comes The, the vibrancy from? of the colours is the idea of the new dawn. Like, as in, n- <clears throat> humans have been away for almost two decades at this point and nature's been able to take over so in terms of the of the vibrancy of the flora and the fauna that comes from that point in terms of the actual pink in the the fluorescent paint um you just spat so much yeah i know <laughs> i can't cover it through my nose it's very hard um it's not really explained why everything's painted pink that sort of stuff but there are some cool uses of that coloring later on so when you go to sort of areas that are in, inhabited with bliss they're all hot pink now. Okay. So it's, so it's connected in there in some capacity. I don't know how or why they're able to paint everything pink. Yeah. But it's more of a it's more to accompany the aesthetic of the new, the bright, the colourful. So now that you've had more time with it from what we had last week, mm-hmm. do you, how do you feel about the change in RPG mechanics? Love and do it. you think they should main put them into the mainline series? Um, personally, I absolutely love it. I love the idea. So, for those that know who may not have checked in last week, uh, in terms of the weaponry, uh, there are four tiers now. There is grey, blue, purple, and gold. Um, and they obviously the higher they are, the more dangerous they are. And the enemies are also in that same boat. They're given the same colouring system. Uh, and you can now also see health bars above the head. You when you hit them, you see you know damage numbers. So do, they, do the sorry? Do the enemies have levels, or are they just by the colour? Like these, the these are orange enemies and I've only got blue guns. So yeah, they're so going to fuck me so up. So you're going to get wrecked. But if you have an orange gun, doesn't yep. matter what level you are, yep. you're orange and they're orange, you're good. Yeah, you there's a better better standoff. You can still get mush, but it's a better standoff okay. when you're both matching. So yep. these in the introduction of these new RPG elements are fantastic. I absolutely love it. Because previously, aside from just playing the numbers game of this one does 400 damage, this one does 600 damage. Mm. Now that you can visually you see a visual representation of what those numbers mean it makes it all better like it, may, it actually makes me be more tactical in terms of going into an outpost or going into a mission structure like for missions like this is a purple ranked mission I'm sitting here with grey guns going probably shouldn't do that so, the, so the, the game never feels unforgiving in that capacity because you're always knowing what you need for that particular moment not, not in a way it's made it simplified or easy it's just helping you be prepared so, like, I was playing some co-op, funny enough, with Paul, and Paul had superior weaponry to myself. So, like, I was it was a really good way to sort of see that black and white comparison. So, I think I was rocking tier two at that point, which is blue. So, I'm going in with this, you know, tier two weapon. Blah, 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 and the, Paul's just mowing people down. And, and Paul just goes, yeah. and everyone's just monstered. So, yeah. we... We were doing outposts, which now have a multi-tiered structure within themselves as well. So normally you'd liberate an outpost, you're done. So now that there is a lot more looting and collecting of uh, crafting and collecting items to build to do more crafting, um, outposts can be liberated multiple times, each time getting more difficult, requiring you to have a next tier of weaponry, you know, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So when I was doing the co-op with Paul uh, him being the higher tier so we were able to just mow through them nice and fast but when we got to the last tier I had no choice but to, to sit back and just scout people and be like <laughs> dude there dude there truck there well, Paul says superior weapons superior player that's correct shots fired <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm, I'm just like scouting going there's dudes here the dudes behind you and he has to do all the hard work because my weaponry was just ping mm. ping just right off the armor like I, do you, did you find that restricted what you could uh-huh. do in the map 
Because, you know, you think back to all the other Far Cries, it's literally go wherever the fuck you want whenever you want and do the thing. Whereas with this tiered system, you can't really, like, you just can't do it. Yes and no. Like, some side missions... Do, oh, sorry, as I'll be playing Quincy's by accident. Um, some side missions do... Re- like, they clearly state you should be this, this, and that. But as you progress the story, that's where the world adapts accordingly. So you could essentially do majority of the map using your gray weapons in act one but as you hit act two everyone bumps up act three everyone bumps up so you don't you don't get to a point where there's no as far as i'm aware um i may have missed it there is no act four so you're not but everyone's not an elite villain everyone is you know you know gray blue or purple so for that reason it kind of works better in that way so as you're leveling up in the story because ideally as you're progressing through the story it is telling you that you need do need to upgrade your home base to this and this and this therefore your weaponry should be part of that should be upgrading your workbenches which allows you to make newer and better weapons so if, if you're hitting act three you should your weaponry should be at this point is the upgrading shit yeah, you know, again, just like you need to upgrade this and keep your settlement fed and, you know... Oh, no, 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 no. And no. it's just like, oh, I just want to play the game. There is absolutely zero management on the on the on on your community, on your outpost, on, on your home base. The only thing you need to do in there is you go in there and there's it's different sections. It's like infirmary, weaponry, explosives, garage, t- alley, a helipad, whatever. So you go in there and you just say, upgrade that to level two, upgrade that to level three, whatever, whatever. And that's it. You, there's no micromanagement in terms of do you need Make to sure actively like farm parts and all that? Yes. Uh, like, do you do you normally just kind of get, go there and go? Oh, I've got enough stuff. Or it's like, fuck, I need. It depends. Screws. So for some things, it's like for the, the basic items like screws, springs, components, cogs, all these smaller things, you will have an abundance of them. Like I have about four thousand springs at this point because huh. you, know, you just find them as you're as you're looting bodies. So why doesn't every outpost you have have a trampoline? <laughs> that would be rad. <laughs> so as you sort of go along, you're just collecting all the li- all the littler stuff that helps you build up, you know, uh, build up the basic, you know, the grey and the blue stuff, right? No concerns. As you head into the higher tiers, they're asking for things like circuit boards, and these things are a lot rarer. And you can find them if you do ex ex. Uh, expeditions so they have this new thing uh where there's a guy with a helicopter and he'll take you out of the map so Mm. you go to these one-off locations like alcatraz island some big fucking boat some um uh, carnival uh, theme park down in in louisiana you go there and it's just there is a package in there go get that package get it out and you'll get all the components it sounds like it's pretty close to like uh Far Cry Fallout crossover. It is. It's it's, you know a, it's I mean? a good combination actually. Because like when you said like you go to like the carnival, I recently went to the carnival in or Appalachia, Nuke t- Nuke where I think you joined me and Alex, and then nu- and Nuke dropped there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's just you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. There's yeah. some good little touches there, and so as you once again, these expeditions can also rank up in points. So what tier one, two, three. So in that capacity you can then go back and farm that as many times as you want to sort of okay. get extra circuit boards and whatnot and then you use them to upgrade your stuff so there is a little bit of grinding in terms of getting the items that you want but I, I only there's only been a handful of times that I've actively had to go and seek out stuff the circuit boards were one and the main fuel the main consumption the main item you need in building of your home base or prosperity as it's called in this game it's not called prosperity is ethanol which is fuel. Mm-hmm. So you get fuel from these expeditions. You can find them throughout the world and you do get them from finishing missions and clearing outposts. However, the best way to find them is to f- go around the open world and find the highwaymen who were the, the merc- like the, the people under Mikey and Lou uh, to you hijack one of their ethanol tankers and bring it back to your home okay. base or an outpost. Yeah. So there is a little bit of piss farting around the world to try find ethanol because you... In, that's the rarest commodity. Is it fun though? Yeah, it gets fun. Yeah. Um, but what with the RPG stuff, do you think they should keep it? Oh yeah, going into like oh five, yeah, six and above. My only concern, like I love this being a sideline, um, and I really enjoy this being a, a spin-off game. I would like to bring up a lot of this to the main thing. However, with the mainline games, they do tend to have that that sort of part of serious and sensibility like there is some realism to it in okay. some capacity yeah like obviously they get a little bit silly here and there as well but they're they're a bit more grounded and i, I think t- part of that stuff takes away the groundedness of it to me mm-hmm. but it still plays fucking great so the answer is yes 
and yes. Yes, but no. Because that's what I found I really liked because playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, mm-hmm. I hadn't played an Assassin's Creed for like a decade. And it's got all that tiered loot, damage numbers and all that stuff and, you know, uh, enemy tier levels and all that. I'm like, this is fucking sick. I love this yeah. RPG. That weapon, feedback so loop is great. And yeah. mate, Paul brought up a good point, actually. He goes, even if you are a higher level, you do need to be careful. I died way more than Ryan because I was fucking around. Because it's so good, like, when you're rocking blue weapons in Assassin's Creed and you do this really hard fold over and there's an orange weapon, you're like, you can feel like, yeah. you're like, oh, like you can feel the power difference. Yeah. You know what no, I mean? No, 100%. So, like, w- like, when I unlock to be able to get the gold tier, right? And, you mm. know, the game lets you compare your weapons. Like, what is it now compared to this one? So, you know what you're getting advantages, disadvantages, right? Mm. So, when I finally went from the, the purple to, to the gold, I picked up, I was like, and I'm just mowing down regular people. I'm like, I legitimately felt powerful. Yeah. And cool. it was really cool because it, it was this weird line of remembering remembering back to like a week ago when I first started playing it and my skill level is here and I'm getting about this you know I'm getting kind of monstered by mid-tier creatures now mm. I'm like poof like, yeah. it fe- like the, the sense of progression there mm. is wonderful it's yeah. absolutely and I'm not wonderful. sure you can get that sense of progression without that system yeah. in place you know what I mean because even visually like if, even if I'm walking through and I mow someone down and they got big weapon there and it's a grab like purr, purr. <laughs> now I have time for this grey piece of shit and it's going to walk right past it. Did the map change enough? Yeah. Yeah? So visually... The you showed me when I got here. Yeah. You like see when the nukes went off, the dam broke. Yep. And now there's like flooding, like, you know... Yeah, so the big whole north section of the map is all flooded because of the dam break. Um, you know, the, the forests are all kind... They're not quite as full and lush <laughs> as they were in Far Cry 5. And there is a lot of bland and plain areas, mm. but a, a, where there used to be a lot of towns, they've all been piled up with dirt. So, like, a, a, a you know, house that used to be just freestanding is now buried, you know... It's different enough to be aesthetically different. If you... It's not entirely... Like, if you know where things are, you'll have a vague recollection of where things are as you play, but you, you will stumble across things without you realizing. You if you played Far Cry 5. You played Far Cry 5, sorry. So you will stumble across things without even realizing because it's kind of different enough to not remember where it was. So, like, when I came across, there's uh, one of the first towns you see in Far Cry 5. It's the one that was the demo at PAX. Mm. So you know, it has, like, this spread eagle bar or whatever. So when you find that, you're like, holy shit. Mm. And you're like, hang on. So if that's there, that means the airfield should be right there. So you ride on the road and it's there. It's all messed up. It's all messed up. But you're like, all right, cool. So there's a couple of key landmarks that you remember. Mm-hmm. And the game has this collectible um, where you go and you have a, like a series of old Polaroids and you go to these old loca- these new locations okay. and pull up. So you get a nice comparative piece yeah. of what it is and what it was. Um, there's enough... T- I, I believe there's enough change to make it feel different, at least look different. But... It's still basically... It's, it's still heavy the same. Um, they've done this really interesting idea of you can't go into certain areas because it's too radiated. There's no way of getting in there, I don't believe. That's the the edge of the map. It rads. Yeah, so just say, hey, it's too, the, the radiation here is way too brutal. You can't... Obviously, just need a set of power armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. And you you some, just nailed it. Take some rad X. But, like, you know, when you sort of have to trudge up north for a particular mission like you see the changes in the world and it's very it's very cool does last question yeah that's all the questions you want that's about all i got yeah because yeah uh story story did, does it does it match up to the gameplay does the gameplay carry the story does the story carry the game like most far cry games i believe the the big driving force of the of the game is its gameplay Mm. story has always been there and you know in Far Cry 5 the gameplay was always great but because you have that creative freedom to do whatever the hell you want whatever order you want like the gameplay is never sorry the, the story has never been a primary focus mm. um, now with this game the, the story is sufficient like it's fine it's not groundbreaking in any capacity um, like the main villains like Mikey and Lou they really are just there it is bad they're just bad it's cause. like unlike Joseph Seed who has a presence yeah right so like when you're in that room or when you when you see him or when you hear him like the, the way he delivers his lines it's uncomfortable but you, you find it's that depressing. from pretty much all the Far Cry games since 3 like I can't speak for 1 or 2 because I never played them but you know Vass yeah. had that presence Pagan Min had that presence yeah Joseph Seed has that you know when they're around and they're speaking you've they've got your attention yeah you know and Mark and Lou didn't really have that for me personally right yeah. um, so I was like oh okay cool they're there 
I'm going to fucking murder them right, I'm looking in about I'm, 30 I'm, hours. Yeah, in, in X, you know, in 22 missions, as it says, according to the, the you know, the, the key on the map, mm. I'm 22 missions, I'm going to fuck them. I'm going to mm. wreck them. Because you're on the final mission. I am on the final mission. Yeah. As like, you, I made so you stop. You made me stop because I was going to finish it, get the credits, and then come in here, and you're like, I don't want to see this because I want to play it at some point. I still do want to play it, and I think you've actually maybe convinced me to go get it as well. No, it's yeah, it's on the Popsy account, so you can just go yeah. download it no, and have a time. The trophies have to be on with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing a game unless the trophies. <laughs> Otherwise, it's fucking pointless. Yeah, no, That's why I, get I don't it. play my Switch. I get it because there's no no achievement. No. Uh, yeah, so the story, like, there are some cool nods, to th- you know, sort of throwbacks to Far Cry Five in in the story, and you do because the story is tied to the gameplay in terms of le- leveling yourself up leveling up prosperity like you do get that sense of progression as you go um some of the like there's no like depth in a lot of the characters that i'm finding it's still very it's not surface level there's a little bit but i think it, it, be, being a direct sequel it does rely on far cry 5 knowledge a little bit mm. um it's enough to keep you moving forward yeah i just remember something funny i saw a youtube ad yesterday um, I think it's Clive Palmer's. You know Clive, how Clive Palmer's yeah. doing these YouTube ads? Yeah, I hate it. And one of them, he's got a girl speaking for him, and she's like, insanity, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That's and the I one, was like, Far Cry 3. You just, you just fucking played Far Cry 3, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it, it does sound cool. Like, watching you play it the two times I've been over while you're playing it, it does look good. It does look, you know, eye-catching. What I didn't like about Far Cry 5 was just how big the map was. The map, it, like the map isn't as large. Like yeah. they have honed it down a but little it, bit. And it's all, but it also seems to kind of funnel you in a certain direction. It does, certainly does. Yes. Whereas with Far Cry Five, like I played it for probably about seven or eight hours. I was like, this is too much. Like I can't. Those type of games, I find it so hard to get a grasp on. Like pick a task and go I'm gonna go do that yeah so because then there's this and that and that it's like oh maybe I should go and it, I need a bit of direction in my games yeah. so in Far Cry 5 it did try to go hey go go to this guy first go to this brother first because yeah. his area is kind of a bit easier for you mm. because you know I went to the the, the chicks. So you went to mid tier straight away. Yeah, so like the, although Far Cry Five didn't have the tier levels of characters like we do in Far Cry New Dawn, but it's, it's they they kind of implied that that's what it's set up like, right? Mm-hmm. So we're here; it's a lot more visual. Mm. So in this ca- you know, in this case, you would have gone to that first area, had a good time, and so the way I had to do with Far Cry was like, all right, I'm gonna eliminate this area first, then move to this area, and I won't go into that area. Like once I accidentally crossed the little the invisible border by accident, and I saw all the bliss people, I'm like, nah. What I hate is when you're doing that taking. That approach i'm gonna do this area and not go to that area at all but then something in this area wants to send you over to, and you're like no yeah i've got my flow yeah don't fuck with me like yeah. this because <laughs> it just because then you go into that place in the other area you don't want to be in it's like hey we need help over here it's like i'll come back later yeah. i'll come back later hold that thought yeah no we need it now and there's like a timer it's like no <laughs> <laughs> don't do this. but, but no. with the rpg mechanics and the tier loot like that I like that. I well, like yeah, that. Yeah, and games. because there is the, 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 there is it's not loot and shooting per se. Mm. Like you don't have to go repeat the run the same thing over and over again, but you can. Um, it's very very it's very basic loot and shoot, right? That's fine. So you'll get you able to you know go in there, get the loot you need to build the weapon you want. But like there, and there is a finite point, unlike the likes of Division or Destiny, where it just keep going and going and going and going and going. Yeah. Like this because this is a single player campaign, it doesn't have that pull. Um, but no, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself with it. I'm like, um, this close to getting credits, and once you boot, I'm going to get credits, and then I'm going to feel happy. And, and then, then check I- out the Platinum. Well, I said I, I've completed almost all the side missions. I've got a good hunk of the trophies. There are some co-op ones, so Paul, if you are still watching, I may need to help me get some trophies so mm. we can get some plat going on. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking I might chip away at it, but it might not be an instant thing. I might have to go, go play with Metro for a while, then come back yeah. and sort of do the rest. Because it's not, um, cause coming up to what, March? Yeah. I'm like looking at Sekiro. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Because these games, I'm always like, they're so fucking cool, but I s- suck. And I can never get past like the second boss. Yeah. And the, like Sekiro is like cool. And then like the Division 2 is out. And the day one still might hook me. Mm. You know, that whole day one, like the hype's out. You know, you see it on the shelf. Like, oh, I'll just get it. Maybe. Yeah. And the Sinking City is out as well. Uh, uh, yes. That's what I'm very excited for. Um, but you have time until is there anything in March that you're even kind of not really like I'm pretty quiet now Um, until Days Gone in April it's Days Gone in April is pretty much the big one for me so I may try to do some sneaky catching up Mm. sort of chip off a couple other games in that point or I might just not and chill out cool what's wrestling wrestling 
A fast lane in two weeks. Oh. Excited. Oh. And Mania in April. Fuck yeah. I'll watch Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's on school days for me. Yeah, it's on a Monday. Mm. It doesn't fall on Is it school Friday. holidays though? I'm unsure. Be pretty close. I've got but, nothing else. But yeah, so you. look, it, in terms of what I recommend Far Cry New Dawn, hells yeah, I would. The game's great. The game's really, really good. It is cheaper than a full price game, so that's going to be an advantage of it as well. If you played Far Cry 5, if you really sort of enjoyed the RPG systems that they're bringing into the likes of Assassin's Creed and whatnot, you are going to have a good time. The story is enough to keep pushing you forward. Uh, there are nods to Far Cry 5, which makes it even better. Paul James says more, 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 which means he's a big fan. He's digging it. He's enjoying it. I bet you it's about, what, 60 bucks? Far Cry? That's Far Cry 5, dude. Why the fuck Just would it bring ch- that Chuck up? Far Cry in them search up there. Uh, 60, uh, 59 bucks for the standard edition. So it is what about 20, 30 bucks cheaper on regular price, right? Not too Not, not too really, because he could buy Far Cry 5 from JB for $69. Well, it depends on what EB... What's EB got in that? That'd be the real tower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, $150 uh, but yeah no, I th- I'm th- I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it I 70. I think 70 yeah. well, there you go I think it's great I think it's absolutely great I don't know there's another way ways I can say it it's fucking great cool like I, I'm not I'm not as an enamored with it like I was with uh, Resident Evil mm. however at work I've been thinking about Far Cry I'm wanting to play it more so that's a good sign that's totally a good sign it is. Go pick it up. So big thank you once again to Ubisoft Australia for providing us the code for this game. We do certainly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it was really cool. Like it, it, I was thinking about it the other day actually about uh, a, lot, a lot of the time when we review stuff, we, we tend to review stuff quite positively. But then I thought about it. I'm like, That's because we, we have the luck. We just pick and choose what we want to play. Well, we only ask for the games we're interested yeah, in. We're not, yeah, so we don't ask the games well, we want to play. I like. mean, not really. Like the Division 2, I shat on. No, no, I understand, like, when we get, like, when we, the, we actually do that get a game. That was using the code given mm. from Ubisoft. That's certainly well. true. I uh, know, I just thought the other day, I'm like, man, maybe we're too positive. I'm like, no, no, because th- this isn't this isn't 20, uh, 2016 pop culture where we played whatever we wanted. We played whatever came our way. This is 2019 pop C. Where we play what we want. And for that reason, we tend, to, we tend to pick games we like better. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Cool. If you could try to hook me up with Sinking City, that'd be fantastic. I guess I'm gonna tell you, I guess I'm gonna tell you about that after this too. Um, Do I, am I going to a pre-release event? No. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> am uh, I ever? But yeah. Let's, uh, let's but yeah so let yeah. us know what you think of Far Cry New Dawn as we kind of just gargle my way through that last part there. Um, in those comments below, Discord channel, Facebook, all the different places you you can uh, come to chat with us about that. You know you love a game when you change your phone background to one of its characters. Pathfinder. Yeah. Is, the, oh, is that he's, Apex? He's my main in Apex. Yeah. Yeah, he's cool. such a positive positive robot everyone's like yeah let's fucking kill each other and he's just like hello friends <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I killed you are you proud <laughs> <laughs> or like one of because you can do finishes like you yeah. knock them down you do like your finisher on them one of his he like grapples them through the neck rips them forward and then goes for a high five on the way down and when they don't because they're like ugh his like smiley face goes sad he's like oh, <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't realise that he's yeah. murdered them yeah. Uh, but yeah let us know in on all those social medias that we do have down below we're very keen to chat all the time if you want to talk to Josh though probably Discord's probably the best option Discord's all I have yeah uh, the drop uh, you know, yeah so yeah. Far, Cry, <laughs> Far Cry came out like a week ago this game's coming out this week um, in a section we call coming to the players which is we read the drop Heads up, as always, these are North American dates, so they may not come out on the corresponding day. An example, Farm Together was meant to come out on Wednesday. It didn't. It's coming out on Monday. So mm. tomorrow, I'll be farming together by myself and I'll probably stream that Are on you Wednesday. picking that up, are you? Fuck yeah, I'm picking cool. it up. Uh, it's a big drop tip this week. It's Ooh, a, it's a that's, what, that's what you said. 8 Bit Invaders, PS4 Digital and Retail, The Ark Slinger, PSVR Digital, Awesome P, PS4, PSV Digital. Blast Zone Tournament, PS4 Digital, Crash Dummy, PS4 Do you remember Crash Dummies? Mm-hmm. You remember them? Yeah. It was a game. Uh, Creepy Road, PS4 Digital, Dead or Alive 6, PS4 Digital and Retail. Oh, yeah. What a punchy game. Is, Death- isn't that the Boob Jiggle Game Simulator? Yeah, but apparently they've toned down on that. Boobs. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. <laughs> uh, Death Coming, PS4 Digital. Deponia Doomsday PS4 Digital Dirt Rally 2.0 PS4 Digital and Retail Doom and Destiny PS4 Digital Fimble PS4 Digital Honor and Duty D-Day PSVR Digital That could be kind of cool Doing mm-hmm. like D-Day in VR Yeah like With the boats and stuff. Horrifying The Lego Movie 2 Video Game PS4 Post-traumatic Digital and Retail Proxy Near Automata Game of the Year Game of the Yorha 
Edition, PS4 Digital Retail. That's a good game. You should play that. Uh, Pick a Picks Classic, PS4, PS Vita Digital. That's got nothing to do with Pokemon, by the way. Remy Law, PS4 Digital Stellaris, PS4 Digital. I know this is a very popular game. Mm, it's PC, it was PC. It was, it? yeah. Uh, Summer Funland, PS VR Digital. Mm. Toe Jam and Earl, back in the groove. Ooh, I've to told Dill. Dill's a big uh, fan. PS4 Digital. Trials Rising, PS4 Digital Retail. Uh, I haven't played the open beta of that. I forgot to mention yeah. that. Game's good. Mm? Uh, Vertigo Home. PS4, PSVR Digital, The Walking Vegetables Radical Edition, PS4 Digital, Wartile, PS4 Digital. This actually sounds cool. Wartile, experience a living, breathing tabletop video game oh. that invites the player into a miniature universe full of small adventures that is set beautifully ha- in a beautifully handcrafted diorama battle boards oh. inspired by Norse mythology to honour the Vikings. Oh, shit. I have to let Paris know. That sounds fun. That sounds, sounds great. Cool. I haven't seen that trailer anything. We'll have to we'll look into it. Um, but yeah, you can very much tell that uh, everyone was like, all right, we're not... Let's say out of Anthem... And Metro and Far Cry. Yeah, that's sig- that's ignore the week away. of the fifteenth and the twenty second, yeah. and it's done. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so shit. um, Trials Rising. Uh, I should mention, like I, we did originally play the Alpha. We were given codes once again. Thank you to uh, Ubisoft. Um, the Alpha was a hot fucking hot mess. I got connected twice, I think, in the mm-hmm. third time I played it. I think you did talk about that. The yeah, Alpha. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so I've been playing the open beta run so much better like I just no problem getting that's in and out that's why there's alphas that's right? exactly why there's alphas yeah so it's, it's cool to see that change that growth and hopefully um, we can jump on that this week I had some well. talk, I had some fun with Fusion back in the day yeah Trials, Trials Fusion Trials good, good fun, yeah, fun. reminds me of Elastomania what? reminds me of Elastomania did you ever play Elastomania? it rings a bell I don't think so it was like a Maybe. 2D motorbike game and it's super tracks it's like a flash game uh, it's like back like, in the high school days uh, did you ever play Oli Oli? Yeah. How good is that? It's on Switch now. Is it? came out last week. Mm. Okay. I'm not going to play my Switch. <laughs> I was actually on the fence about selling it. I'm like, why the <gasps> fuck do I even have this for? Ooh, it's it's my point. YouTube machine in my bedroom. Yeah, I don't play a lot of Switch. I've got anymore. it hooked up to my little bedroom TV and mm-hmm. I just use YouTube. But then the mainline Pokemon game's out later this year. Yeah. That's probably going to be dope. Yeah. Why can't they have... I think it's worth holding on Why on can't it? they have trophies or something? Yeah, it does need an achievement capacity. Good, good. But then it's liberating when there's not at the same time. No, I disagree because... I, yeah, although, I, although I don't trophy hunt, like you know, if you want trophy hunters, there's another place. It's that little dopamine do. rush you get when it. Pops. Yeah, go bing it. Oh, yeah. and I, I liked looking at the list, going, "Oh, can I get? Oh, I could get oh, that." Something with Xbox, that? by the way, scared the fuck out of me the other day. Yeah, is there's different tier, like when you get like a rare trophy, it's a different tier, so you get a different sound when yeah. it pops, and it's so fucking loud. Bah! It's like it's like bring, and then a diamond shattering. I'm like, what the fuck? Because I'm playing. What was I playing? I don't even know what I was playing. It scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> but it was cool though, because it's like, this is an epic trophy. I do love that trophy. That little, the trophy little pop rush. sound though is great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then it's like when I'm playing my Switch, I'm like playing one of these big games, so why the fuck am I playing it for? For the joy of it? <laughs> 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 I hate games. <laughs> That PlayStation conversation happened on a Monday morning at 9am Australian Eastern Standard Time on... way to end the show. <laughs> I fucking hate games. <laughs> and 8am on iTunes, Spotify and other podcast services. If you'd like to be a part of future conversations, please join us on Facebook, Discord, comment below. If you're feeling generous, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash popculture and head over there. Check out the tiers. There might be something there that interests you. If you do support us on Patreon, you can watch us record this show live like a handful of people have today and join the conversation as we do the show. If you want to show the support for Pop Cultures on your body, head to popcultures.com slash shop where you buy shirts like this and like this and this and a book where I keep all my wrestling notes oh you need a young and the, the wrestlers book. yeah I was almost I was going to buy one but I already had that one so like that's all, already almost full so. oh, okay next one uh, yeah we asked on twitch twitch.tv slash popculturist and I guarantee you this week I'm either gonna, I probably won't play Metro on stream because Metro is a little bit too slow on plotting for streaming I don't know if Metro is a good game for streaming we tried to stream the first one and we went oh that's fucked and we bounced by something else for a yeah while. I don't think it's yeah so I think uh, this week we'll be farmed together because I'm fucking keen for some farming games. Apparently there's like a... Maybe I'll jump in with you in that. Yeah, you farm Maybe. together? Maybe. How much is it? I don't know. It's 20 bucks US. We'll see. Probably like 25. We'll see. We'll see, see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, yes, and while you're at your podcast services, giving us those five-star reviews and those uh, all the love and download subscribers and stuff, why don't you check out The Young and the rest of the Pop Culture Weekly WWE Podcast. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Yeah. Like and oh, subscribe. Oh, yeah, because next week, uh, well, uh, Wednesday, we are off to see Fighting With My Family. Not the, me. Uh, no, that's Gemini. Uh, so thank you to Universal Stu- uh, Pictures Australia for wh- whipping some invites our way. Um, it's the movie about Paige. It's amazing to me how quickly you've got hooked up in this podcast. What do you mean? 
Like just with contacts and all that. So oh, yeah, fucking here you it's go. the name, man. You give someone, you go, the young and the rest is like, that's fucking great. What do you want? <laughs> You're in. <laughs> yeah. Ringside, WrestleMania, yeah. all specs is paid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it was. I see and I said, hey, this is what we do. This is the show. And like, the first sentence was, that name is brilliant. What do you need? <laughs> <laughs> but no, we, we. Do we need to rebrand this show, do we? No, what do we no, do? Think fine. of something. Uh, but we do have, we did have connections with Universal um, from when we did a lot more movie stuff. It's, they were the ones who sent me to go see Fast and the Furious and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, no, it's fun. it's good fun. But yeah, the fun with a family page. Who you're a big personal, big personal fan of. Um, her story from uh, from the UK's overweight come over to NXT, working her way through to uh, hopefully they show her becoming Divas Champion on the first night she makes mm. main roster. Mm. Hopefully they don't show the part where she gets wrecked good. and kind of wrestle anymore. Oh, good days, good days. Yeah, good days with Paige. I don't know. I just I sent you a little Paige video yesterday. I was like, here you go, man. Yeah, that's just. You know, they're all, you know, blonde and tanned, and, you know, then there's Paige. Just this pale goth chick. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. Like, it's, it was, it was like what? I'm 15 again watching Evanescence video. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Well, until next week, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Saunders. And that was for the players. We fucking hate games. <laughs> Evanescence is cool, though. <laughs>